These three maps tell you a lot about China's strategy to generate more electricity. This is the population density map of China. This is the topographical map of China. And this is a map of China's solar potential. Now that last map of China's solar potential should tip you off that solar is a huge part of China's energy strategy right now. And this is probably the single craziest stat in this entire video. China is installing one gigawatts worth of solar panels every single day in 2025. Just to put it in perspective, a gigawatt's worth of electricity is a fuck ton. That's about what a single nuclear reactor can produce. And to build a new nuclear reactor takes years and is very expensive. Adding a gigawatt's worth of nuclear power to the grid at this moment is a very slow very not straightforward process. China is installing an absolute fuck ton of these. So many that every single day they're adding one gigawatt's worth of solar capacity to their electrical grid in 2025. And the rate at which they're doing that is only accelerating. One gigawatt's worth of power can power, you know, something shy of maybe about a million homes in a country like the US. Another way to put that in context, back in 1994, China started building the Three Gorges Dam. The Three Gorges Dam is the world's largest power plant. It's a hydroelectric dam built in China. And by 2012, 18 years later, the Three Gorges Dam was operating at its full 22 gigawatt capacity. It took 18 years to get that power plant supplying 22 gigawatts of electricity online. Fast forward to 2025, China is installing a new Three Gorges Dam worth of solar electricity every three weeks. How the fuck do you compete with that? In 2025, China has installed twice as much solar capacity as the rest of the world combined. China is the world's largest producer of electricity and they produce about twice as much electricity as the country in the number two spot, the United States. So let's go back to our maps of China. Now, if you look at the population density map of China, you will see that China's population overwhelmingly lives in the eastern part of China. China has 1.4 billion people 90% of whom live over here. Not here. 90% of them live over here. You compare this map to China's topographical map, and you'll see that the eastern part of China, where everybody lives, is a very low-lying part of China. The western part of China is much higher altitude. There's a lot of mountains, but nobody really lives here, relatively speaking. And this is a map of China's solar potential, and you can see that China's best solar potential is also over here in the mountainous west part, where it's also very cold. The New York Times just published these two articles about China's electrical infrastructure. This article is about how China built the world's single largest solar farm at a site that's 10,000 feet above sea level on the Tibetan Plateau. Right here, the Talatan Solar Park. The other article is about how China powers its electric cars and high-speed trains using a new network of extremely long transmission lines. This transmission line is 2,000 miles long, and it uses a technology that China has pioneered called Ultra High Voltage Direct Current. These power lines might look like any other ordinary power lines cluttering up your pristine landscape, but I assure you these power lines can transfer more power with greater efficiency over greater distances than any other power line on Earth. That's kind of badass, actually. Now, while the transmission line that's featured here in the New York Times is remarkable in that it's the world's longest, over 2,000 miles long, and also the highest voltage, it's part of a larger network of ultra-high voltage transmission lines designed to bring power in from the lesser populated parts of China into the densely populated urban parts in the east. China currently has 42 ultra-high voltage transmission lines that are more powerful than anything the United States has, and they're working on tripling that number by 2050. Now, it is an important caveat that China can easily build a 2,000 mile long transmission line because of the way their government operates in the United States or any other Western country. An infrastructure project that's this long and cutting through so many people's land would create a long list of lawsuits and the whole project would take years probably to ever get started. China can kind of just come in and say, hey, we're going to build this through your land. We hope you think it's cool. The whole project doesn't get stalled by decades of lawsuits. It's kind of an interesting backstory. What makes this power line particularly badass is that it's ultra high voltage direct current. That's DC as opposed to AC alternating current. Now back in the dawn of the electrical age, there was a fight that broke out called the War of the Currents. A debate 
about should the grid be built around direct current or alternating current. And on one side of the War of the Currents, you had Thomas Edison, who was fighting for the grid to be built using direct current. And on the other side, you had Westinghouse advocating for alternating current. Ultimately, it was Westinghouse who won out. Now, you can think of alternating versus direct current as different technologies that have different ways of pumping electricity through the grid. Alternating current works kind of like your heart, which sends electricity through the grid in pulses. Direct current sends electricity through continuously no pulse at all. Almost all of your household electronics use direct current. Anything that's a computer or an LED light, anything like that, it all uses direct current, which is why your life is full of these AC adapters. So you can transform the grid's alternating current to the direct current used by your phone or whatever the fuck. But it was alternating current that became the standard for the entire grid because at least at the time, you could transmit electricity over large distances much more efficiently using alternating current than you could with direct current. Granted, the distances at the time were probably something on the order of like a few miles, maybe 20, 30 miles away. You didn't yet have this large grid built out where you know, you've got a power plant hundreds of miles away sending you electricity to a city. And so what's so remarkable about China's infrastructure here is that not only is this the world's longest transmission line, not only is it the world's highest voltage transmission line, it uses direct current, not alternating current and that actually means over very long distances it's even more efficient than alternating current is that means you can send electricity 2,000 miles and lose very little of it along the way now the other part of china's insanely aggressive strategy for building out their renewable energy infrastructure is constructing these massive solar plants out in the middle of nowhere. Talatan Solar Park has about 17 gigawatts worth of solar power installed in an area that's about seven times larger than Manhattan. But what makes these solar panels even more potent is that they're 10,000 feet up. At 10,000 feet up, there's a lot less atmosphere in between the solar panels and the sun. So that means that the strength of the sunlight that's hitting those solar panels is a lot stronger than what it would be at sea level. These areas are really cold compared to the eastern part of China, and solar panels operate a lot better in the cold than they do in the heat. So this is China's ultra aggressive strategy to develop more electricity. Build gigantic solar farms in the middle of fucking nowhere, way up at high altitude where the sun shines extra bright, where it's pretty cold, where those panels operate mostly efficiently, and then build absolutely insanely long transmission lines to get that electricity to the urban centers like 2,000 miles away. China is also building a lot of industrial facilities in the middle of fucking nowhere around all this cheap, easy solar energy. They're building polysilicon foundries, the plants that turn quartzite into polysilicon, the black material that's central to every solar panel. So China is putting the facilities to create more polysilicon near the absolutely fucking gigantic solar farms to make it even easier and even cheaper to make more solar panels and install even more solar panels than ever before. And of course, they're also building data centers used for artificial intelligence nearby these massive clusters of solar panels in the middle of fucking nowhere. It's a good strategy. Solar is hardly the only form of electricity that China is building right now. China has more nuclear reactors under construction than any other country on Earth. And it's not even like they care that much about green energy specifically. In 2024, China still added almost 100 gigawatts worth of coal power to their grid. I think about what's going on here in the U.S. where granted we have a lot more fossil fuel reserves than China does. But we're like, you know, canceling new solar projects and canceling plans for large transmission lines that would still be smaller than anything China is building. And instead, we're like doubling down on unproven technology like small modular reactors, which I'm not against. I hope those things work out, but they don't exist yet. So I can't help but be awestruck by the insanely aggressive strategy of just putting a fuck ton of these in the middle of nowhere and transmitting them a thousand, two thousand miles to where they're actually needed. In a lot of ways, the U.S. is set up pretty similar to China. About 80% of the U.S. population is located in the east. Our west is covered in high altitude wastelands that's mostly federal land that nobody lives on. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to come up with a more diversified energy strategy. 
just to make sure that we have an absolute fuck ton of electricity for all the different things we want to do. Right now with the artificial intelligence boom, all these huge data centers coming online, hunting around for literally a, a spare gigawatts worth of power here and there so they can build new gigantic training clusters. And in the middle of all this, the price of electricity is going up in most states across the country and consumers aren't very happy about it. It really makes me wonder, yeah, like, let's keep fracking. Horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing is an incredible combination of technologies that unsarcastically I'll probably make a video about how badass it is. However, it's still probably good to diversify and make sure we have as much fucking electricity as possible. What's the downside of plastering an absolute fuck ton of these everywhere, especially out west, up in the high altitude where nobody really lives? or cares. If you want to subscribe to this channel, it's a free way for you to help out and give me more reason to spend more time making these videos. Thank you for watching the Will Chilton YouTube channel. Goodbye.